Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Good at the Virginia Spine Institute, and I'm a spinal surgeon who specializes in complex spine surgery and spinal deformity. Today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about why we treat scoliosis. Now, scoliosis is an abnormal curvature of the spine, and many people have scoliosis, and it's just a minor scoliosis, and there's really not much to do about it. But for a small group of people, spinal curvature will continue to worsen. Now, this can be something that happens when you're a teenager, during your growth spurt, or it can be something that happens later on in life, and lots of times that's associated with degeneration and wearing and tearing of the discs in our spine, leading to abnormal curvature. Now, for certain people, curvatures get to a certain size, and we know they're very likely to cause problems. And as scoliosis curvatures get bigger, they're more likely to cause malalignment of the body, trouble standing up straight, sometimes back pain, and occasionally neurologic problems such as numbness or weakness, trouble walking. For a more severe scoliosis, particularly involving the thoracic area of the chest, uh, if untreated this can lead to a limiting lung or heart function, usually in, in, in much more severe scenarios. Now it's relatively common for people who are having curves of a certain size to consider surgery. And we look at the size of the curve and try and predict what a patient's future is going to be. And there are times when it makes sense to do a smaller surgery now to try and avoid a bigger surgery down the road. And so I wanted to show a couple pictures to explain uh, what happened to a few patients and why we might consider doing a scoliosis surgery uh, at an earlier time point or at a younger age. So uh, what I'm gonna do is show two x-rays. So these are two different patients with scoliosis, but similar scoliosis curves. So this is an x-ray taken like we're standing behind the patient like this. And so we're seeing the shoulder. This is the right and the left. So the head is up here and this is the pelvis. And ideally the spine would be straight up and down. So for this patient we can see that there is a, a double curvature affecting the thoracic and the lumbar spine. Now, scoliosis doctors measure the curve by measuring the angle of the bones with geometry, and that's where we come up with the number or the size of the curve. So this patient has a 54 degree curve in the thoracic spine and a 38 degree curvature in the lumbar spine. So the bigger curve is up here, okay? Now, uh, another patient uh, who has a similar situation, this time the curve is 45 degrees in the thoracic spine and 15 degrees in the lumbar spine, so a little bit smaller in the lumbar spine. Now, when we see people who have progressive curvatures, there's sometimes a decision to do surgery. Now, surgery involves fixing onto the spine with implants, typically screws and rods, to actually straighten and derotate the spine, holding in a better position, which straightens the spine, but also prevents continued progression down the road. Now, the trade-off of a spinal fusion is that it takes away motion in whatever, whatever area is fused. And so, if a person has to have multiple bones fused together, they may not move in that area moving forward. Now, when we're thinking about if it's best for a patient to consider surgery or not, one important factor is the size of the curve, but another important factor is the location of the curve. So in both of these patients, the curve is primarily in the thoracic spine. Now that's an area where we don't really have that much motion. We move a lot in our necks and our low back, but because of the rib cage, we don't move much here. And if a patient requires scoliosis surgery in this area, it's not as limiting as if they require it in another area. Now, when people have one big curve, it tends to cause the remaining part of the spine to curve as well. So this is the primary curve, the number one problem, but it's causing the spine above and below to curve as well. And so in some circumstances, we may recommend a smaller surgery to address the primary curve now in order to give, prevent getting into a bigger problem down the road where other areas of the spine have to be treated surgically. And so for a patients with thoracic curvatures that are getting bigger and causing the remaining spine to curve, we may recommend surgery here in order to protect or prevent surgery 
in the other parts of the spine down the road. And so these are two patients from many years ago, uh, and I'm going to show what happened to their spines over time as an example. And so the first patient here, a 54 degree curve and a 38 degree curve, and ultimately went on to have a surgical fusion decades ago where the spine was fixed with metal implants and straightened. And we can see that after that surgery, the curve went from 54 degrees down to around 40 degrees, so a partial correction. And we can see that the low back, without even tr being treated with surgery, also decreased from about 38 degrees to 29 degrees. Now, this x-ray is taken over 20 years after the patient had their surgical procedure. And so this patient had this area stabilized surgically, and as a result, the remaining low back was stabilized, and it did not continue to get worse as they lived their life. And this is a person who can bend over and touch their toes and is still very functional over 20 years after their scoliosis surgery because the low back motion was preserved. If we go to the other patient that we looked at from the very beginning, remember this was a smaller curve actually, 45 degrees and 15 degrees. Well in this scenario we would typically predict that this type of curve will slowly get worse over time, a degree or two degrees a year, but over time we can see what happens. And so this 45 degree curve over about 20 years has progressed in this patient up to 77 degrees. And unfortunately because this has progressed, this low back has curved very severely, going from 15 to 56 degrees. Now this is a patient who's having much more problems, limitations from their quality of life, severe arthritis, pinched nerves, and the surgical treatment at this point is now to consider fusing both curves, almost a full spine fusion. This is a much bigger surgery to go through, and ultimately it takes away all the motion of the low back as well. Uh, and so when you look at the path for these two different patients, ultimately 20 years out from this diagnosis, one patient is still able to use their back and bend and lift and twist, and the other uh, has had to undergo a much more limiting surgery. And so these type of considerations are really important when we're looking at patients and trying to help you understand what is the future, what is the path. And if people have scoliosis that's being observed, Understanding how often we need to keep an eye on it is critical because we don't want to get to a situation where we miss our window to do something smaller now to prevent something bigger down the road.